Y'all not talking back to me. Somebody say amen because I'm off my message. What it means, but the Bible says, if, if blood washed me, I've been washed by the water of the word. Which means that if I cuss tomorrow, God's not going to take my hair in his back. Amen. I'm not going to cuss tomorrow because I'm trying to work on being a better person. Somebody say amen. amen. I'm trying to do some things right. But every now and then, somebody step on a saw on your toe. Hey, amen. That's, that's not your, but some of you got a saw on your spirit. And every now and then, somebody hit that thing, and you go back to speaking the way you used to speak. It's okay. You can get past that. Keep, uh, let, let me move on. Am I helping you all here a little bit? Yes. So now I understand that I'm already accepted. Wait, listen, call your own hymn. Eternal life is a free gift that I got through salvation. I don't need your approval to have it. Oh, come on. I just need to believe. Yes. When I came into Christ, I became what they call saved. He was offered up for my transgressions, raised up again for my justification. Which means that before God, I'm faultless. Yeah. Do you all believe the Bible? Yes. Not before you, because you're judging me on everything you know about yourself. Amen? So I became faultless. I became unblameable. I became untrue. You all got to get this. We got to get this. If you're going to move on the kingdom, you got to get this. Which means that God finds no fault with me even when you do. Yes. See, you got to believe this for yourself, y'all. Mm -hmm. This is not about Moses. You got to receive this. Because everybody in here got something you don't want somebody to know. Come on, sir. Come on, sir. Come on. Who didn't say amen? You're lying. Amen. Amen. Everybody in here got something going on in your life. You might lie about it, you might hide it, but there's something that God placed in your life to keep you humble. Yes. And because you don't understand your salvation, you use it as a judgment tool instead of a tool to get you better. Because you have not fully received salvation, you still thinking about what you do right and wrong. Are we talking good here? Everybody in here got something you praying about that the church told you keep praying. It'll go away. Paul said, but giving me a thorn in the flesh. Yeah. Wow. The message of Satan to buffer me, lest I be exalted above measure. My the God apostle God. Paul, the great apostle, said, I prayed for this thing a few times. God said, no, I'm going to leave that with you. I need you to be humble. Yes. Come on, sir. Come on. Come on. Come on. Can we move on? Yes. So now, I want, to, I want you to understand that in this dispensation of the fullness of time, please hear me. I'm giving you scripture. Everything is appointed. If you go back to Abraham, he was teaching us in the model. You know, we have the blessing of Abraham. Can I teach y'all? Yes. In the blessing of Abraham, the promise of God, he told Abraham this. He said, at the appointed time, according to the time of life, I will return and Sarah's going to have the son. Yes. Now, Abraham didn't believe that because they was old. Mm -hmm. But the book says in chapter 22 that when the, when the fullness of time has come, God visited Sarah. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. And he did unto Sarah. Which he promised. And what he was showing us is every time I make you a promise, that's a seed. I'm preaching good here, Rodney. You're going to get I'm preaching real good. Every time I release a promise, that's how your eternal journey starts from faith to faith. Because when I'm going to burst something in you, I'm going to release a seed. Yes, yes, yes. And once I release the seed, it's my responsibility to bring the harvest. Yes, and the church will tell you, you got to fast for 40 days. You're going to be hungry and broken skinny. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all pray for me, man. I'm trying. Uh, if, you, if you laugh a little bit, man. The bottom line is, here's how eternal life works. It's perpetual. He used Abraham. He used Job. He used all these big people of faith to show us. The key to eternal life is the seed that produces the harvest. It's not what you wear. It's not how you pray. It's not where you go to church. It's not what you did yesterday. The seed that's going to produce the harvest, as long as this earth shall remain, he said, seed time and harvest uh, shall not cease. So God was telling us back then that this thing is eternal. It's perpetual. It cannot be changed. And once you come into Christ and you receive this eternal gift, now you're going from faith to faith. I make your promise. You go through a process, you see the harvest. My God, I'm preaching good here if y'all get it. Can I say it again? It's going to give you some peace if you receive this. Because you're going to stop being guilty and condemned about sin. The, the, the eternal life works this way. The Paul said, righteousness is revealed from faith to faith. So I receive a seed. I go through a process. I'm going to teach you something here in a minute. After the process, I see the harvest. That's one thing. That time has been fulfilled. But what I'm living in is the fullness of times. So there's some more times that need to be fulfilled. Amen. So when I got this promise, it was not over. Yeah. Come on. Somebody
Everybody stay with me here. When I got this harvest, it was not over. Another seed is going to be released, already been released. So this time has been fulfilled. But since I'm living in the fullness of times, there's some more times that will be fulfilled. Yeah. I got this now, but that's still out there. Yeah. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing to me. So now that I got this, I shout about this, but I'm focused on that because I got a seed for that. He told me I was going to have that. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Yeah. So since I have that, this time has been fulfilled. I got to keep walking till this time gets fulfilled. And then this, this, now I'm living in what? The fullness of time. And then the time comes, things are going to manifest one right after the other. Somebody yeah. please say amen. Yeah. I'm helping you here. Yes. Am I helping you here this morning? Yeah, absolutely. You ne it's never over. It's never too late. No. You've never lost. It's never, you're only telling the plan. When God is processing you, folk will tell you, you need to give up. You need to walk away. God don't deal with that. God ain't with you no more. You don't miss God. You can't miss God. Time the Holy Ghost doing this. Come on, sir. Come on, sir. Come on. Let me take five minutes and teach y'all something. I feel the Holy Ghost. Am I helping you here? Because you're living in what the Bible calls the ministration of the Spirit. You know what that means? The Holy Ghost in this dispensation that we're in have been given oversight, management, and administration of God's plan. Come on. Which means that all he needs from you is to be available. Amen. That's right, that's right, oh, that's right. This is too good for people not to be saying amen. So now I have, I'm living in the dispensation of the fullness of time. We all got that, right? Yeah. One thing after the other. Just like that promise said, one thing. This time I fulfill, I shout about the car. The next thing that fulfill, I shout about the house. The next thing that's fulfilled, I shout about my family. The next thing that's fulfilled, I shout about the business. But we're moving from from, uh, yeah, from time to time when things have been fulfilled. So you can't afford to quit just because you don't understand. Solomon said that he placed eternity in the hearts of all living creatures that, that we might not ever understand what he's doing. That's true. That's true. When that dog bit you, God had control of that. Yes, 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 but, but, but so now I understand that I have eternal life. So I'm living under this dispensation of thing after thing after thing. I have to trust God, but I'm living in a, comp in, in a covenant called grace. Yes. Yes. I have to understand my agreement, Julie. I have to understand that he's not dealing with my sin. That's right. I have to know that because if I don't get that, I can't move forward right. because sin becomes my master. It's, I know I'm preaching good. Sin becomes your master. You're afraid to live because of sin. Yeah. Yeah. So sin tells you what not, what not to do. You're going to grow out of some things that you need to grow out of, yeah. and that's between you and God. Yeah. Don't let that's church true. folk determine what you're supposed to be doing, what you're supposed to be doing. There. Don't let these people stop you in your process, tell you what God don't deal with. The devil is a liar. Come on now. Hallelujah. Yeah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Shut them up. Hallelujah. So now, I'll, I'll listen, let's, let's walk this out because I'm, I'm done here. I'm a hoop here in a minute. You already know. Yeah, yeah, watch this. I'm under the dispensation of the fullness of time, which means that everything in my life is on the point of schedule. Did we yeah. get it clear? Yes. It doesn't matter how much pain you're in. Come on, sir. Here's what the Bible says. I'm going to take, take a sidebar. The Bible says, I believe it's, it's Hebrews chapter 12. So let's lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily beset us, this whole issue of sin, yeah. not sin, sin, this whole sin thing in your mind. Let us run with patience. Watch this. I'm teaching you something. Somebody say eternal life. Eternal life. The race that is set before us. Watch this. I looked up the word set. It means place before. Mm -hmm. I ain't finished yet. I'm going to take you to Jesus. Let us run with patience. The race that's set before us. Looking unto Jesus. The author and the finisher of your faith. Yes. Who for the joy that was set before him. I'm just going to be happy by myself here this morning. <laughs> Shut them up! Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Can I take a sidebar and teach some of y'all something? Yeah. For the joy, he endured the cross. He put up with that cross when he didn't have to. Because there was a greater purpose. When you're living in eternal life, you need to have the seed of promise so you can know what your purpose is. Amen. Yes. Yeah. Holy Spirit, help me this morning. Somebody say Amen. amen. I, listen, y'all, I just want to get this into you. Amen. I, I, I don't care about nothing else. I just want to get this into you. If you understand your promise, then you know your purpose. Come on. Jesus had a purpose. So he was able to endure whatever he had to endure. I'm going to teach you something here. Because his focus was his purpose. Yes. He was not going to get sidetracked by people trying to kill him. Yes. He was not going to get sidetracked by all too suffering. 
Because he told them, they don't think I can't call some angels right now and straighten this thing out. But I have a joy to send people in church someday. Uh, yes. Come on. I have a joy to send somebody come back to the Father and have a relationship with him through the Holy Spirit. So since I have that purpose set before me, these stripes they hit me with, they have a purpose. These wounds I'm taking, they have a purpose. 